Good afternoon, my name is Major Tony Petrosha and I am the Senior Army Instructor for Colony High School Junior ROTC. Today I'll be giving you a brief overview of military careers and opportunities. Uh, all of the five branches of the military are here, presented on the board, the Army, the Navy, the Air Force, the Marines, and the Coast Guard. All of the branches of service are in the Department of Defense except for the Coast Guard who is part of Department of Homeland Defense. Um, if you thought about joining the military, the first question I would ask you is, what is it you want to do before you decide on what branch you want to go to? Right? Consider what you want to do first, and then figure out which branch does it the best. I did not include the National Guard in the briefing, but the National Guard has components of the Army and the Air Force. Each of the branches of service has a reserve component. The military is made up of a lot more than just combat-related MOSs. Right? On the slide, you can see a welder, cybersecurity, x-ray tech, a lawyer, music for the band, doctors, air traffic controllers, and 18-wheel vehicles for logistics. There's CDL driver opportunities as heavy equipment machine operators. Any job you can think of in the civilian world is going to be in one of the branches of the military. Some may not have all the jobs that others do. For example, the Marine Corps doesn't have a medical section. They use Navy corpsmen. So if you want to be a medic and join the Marines, you got to pick one or the other. Interesting fact is that the Army, believe it or not, has more boats than the Navy. So if you wanted to join the military, how do you get there? What's the process? There's two ways. You can enlist or you can become a commissioned officer. So let's talk enlistment first. So if you wanted to enlist, you would need to talk to a recruiter. You would have to take the ASVAB, right? And the ASVAB is the aptitude battery, and that'll be on the next slide, the aptitude battery that breaks down subsets of how well you do in specific career fields, okay? And so, after you take the ASVAB, you'll receive your scores on how you did, and that will qualify you for jobs. The higher you score on the ASVAB, the more job opportunities you're going to have. So for those of you that are thinking about joining the military, you should do as well as you possibly can in school because the more knowledge you have, the better you will do, the more options you have for career opportunities. If you want to commission and join the military as an officer, there's three ways to do that. You can do ROTC, you can go to a service academy, and the route that I went was officer candidate school. So I was enlisted, then I got my commission through officer candidate school. There are national ROTC scholarships, and should you apply for a national ROTC scholarship, you would need to start the process in your junior year. It'll finish up in your senior year, and if you get a national scholarship, no matter what college you get applied, you, that you get accepted to, the scholarship will follow you for four years for tuition. You can also get what's called a local scholarship, and I'll use UAA as an example. Uh, University of Alaska has an Army and an Air Force ROTC program, so you can attend UAA, take ROTC as an elective, and then compete for a local scholarship. And they hand out four-year, three-year, and two-year scholarships and then they, you can get your commission from there. Each of the branches of the service has a service academy. The Army has West Point in upstate New York. The Air Force has the Air Force Academy in Colorado Springs, Colorado. The Marine Corps has Kings Point, which is in Queens, New York, on the south shore of Long Island. The Navy has Annapolis, which is, I'm sorry, the Navy has the Naval Academy in Annapolis in Maryland. And the Coast Guard, I'm sorry, Coast Guard has a Coast Guard Academy which is in New London, Connecticut. If you have any questions on the ROTC scholarship process or enlistment and you don't know really where to turn, by all means, come on down to the ROTC room where rooms 26 and 27, we can answer some questions. So the ASVAB. And the ASVAB is the Armed Services Vocational Aptitude Battery. And the subtests are designed to measure aptitudes in four domains, verbal, math, science, and technical spatial. Right? So the ASVAB is a breakdown of tested skill areas. Each area has a numerical score, which is determined on how well you did in that specific test area. 
Some jobs require a minimum score in a particular test. For example, in the Army, a satellite controller, which is job skill uh, called 25 Sierra, you have to have a minimum of a 117 in electronic information in order to qualify for that job. So there's a lot of jobs in the military that are very difficult to qualify for, and those jobs tend to have pretty high bonuses. But that's the quick breakdown of the, of the ASVAB. Now, the ASVAB is a test that anybody can take. You have to be 16 years old to take the ASVAB. And I would encourage every student at Colony High School to take it, whether or not you have an interest in the military. It is a military entrance exam. However, if you take the ASVAB, you are not obligated to talk to a recruiter about joining. You can just simply take the test, find out what your strengths and weaknesses are for a future career, and use that data to plan for your future. So military career opportunities. Pay me. What's in it for me? And so for this example, I used an E3, right? Private first class in the Army, Lance Corporal in the Marine Corps, Airman first class for the Air Force. And I used the E3 uh, primarily because a lot of my cadets that decide to enlist will come in as an E3 because they've accomplished three or more years of ROTC. So they get a two rank promotion on their contract. Uh, if you didn't take ROTC and you just enlisted, it wouldn't take very long to make E3 anyway. But the pay and entitlements break down this way. And if you look at the slide, the numbers in red are benefit package costs that are given at no cost to the service member, but would be civilian equivalents. So for an E3, the base pay of just starting out is a little over $2,100 a month, but you're going to be living in your own space in the barracks, or if you're married, you'll get a house on post. Right? So the housing estimate that I gave for $1,000 is based on a one-bedroom apartment rental plus all utilities uh, in the local Anchorage area. Your medical insurance is, of course, given to you at no cost, but if you were to pick up medical insurance on your own on the civilian sector, it'd be about $300 a month for a healthy person in their 20s. $300 food allowance. Uh, if you live in the barracks, you'll be given a meal card to eat in the dining facilities for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. If you are not in the barracks, you'll receive a food stipend. And it's about $300 a month for enlisted. It's slightly lower for, for officers. And then I put in the $500 for a retirement plan, and that's because after 20 years in the military, regardless of branch, you are fully vested for retirement at 50% of your last pay grade, right? And so I used the rank of E7 for the Army. I'd be a sergeant first class. And as of today, that retirement money would be $2,600 a month for the rest of your life, plus free medical. So if you joined at 18, 19 years old, did 20 years, and retired by the time you're 39 from the military, you've got plenty of time for a second career, plus a pension and medical behind you. So what are some of the career opportunities that I can get? I put down some of the credentials that I was able to achieve when I was in the Army as a signal officer and enlisted in the Signal Corps. And so I was a network manager. My MOS was 25 Bravo. And so some of the certifications that I received that are nationally recognized and very marketable were A+, Network+, plus, Security+. Plus. I went to Cisco schools. I had Microsoft Certified Systems Administrator certificates. Uh, and I went to the MCSC, Microsoft Certified System Engineer course, just to name a few. I went to hacking, mapping, scanning schools. Uh, and I spent some time working in the Army Cyber Warfare Center. I did a lot of cool stuff, and I got a lot of great training at no cost with a lot of credentialing that if you spend some time in the military and decide, I want out after four or five years, you can take these nationally recognized credentials and start another career and do very, very well. So I'm going to just wrap it up from there because I just wanted to give a brief overview but again, if there's any questions, if anybody wants to come down and talk to myself or Sergeant Trevino, we're downstairs in rooms 26 and 27 at Colony High School. We have B lunch. Feel free to come down and ask us any questions. Are there questions in the room? There we go. So the question is, can I join the military while still in high school? Absolutely. 
So you can actually contract at 17 years old, uh, active duty, or National Guard, or reserves. Uh, at 17, you would have to have your parents sign off on the contract, but once you're 18, you can sign your own contract. If I joined the military and decided it wasn't for me, how long would I have to wait before I could get out back to the civilian? So if you joined and decided it's not for you, uh, typically contracts are four years active with a four-year reserve obligation. So after that initial four-year contract is up, you don't have to re-enlist and you're done. And if you received any bonus monies, they stay with you as long as you get out on, on, on honorable conditions. Question? If I am in JROTC and I do qualify for the E3 directly after enlisting, um, how, uh, how long does that last? How long does that qualify for? Like, if I wait so, for like 10 years? If you, if you were in ROTC at Colina High School or any other, any other high school program, I would have to confirm with a recruiter, but I want to say that is good for three years from the time you graduated to use that to get that two rank promotion. But I would just contact the recruiter to find out for sure because the business rules change monthly but I believe that's what it is right now. It's a, th it's a three year window from graduation. All right, last question. Um, how many times can I take the ASVAB? How many times can you take the ASVAB? Great question. Recruiters don't want you to take it too many times because it takes up their time to do. However, I will tell you if there's a specific job you want, for example, I'll use 25 Sierra again, satellite controller in the Army. And I had soldiers that were 25 Sierras uh, when I was a company commander, and I was signing $60,000 bonuses for these men and women to stay in. Um, so one more time, Abigail. How many times can you take the ASVAB? OK, how many times can you take the ASVAB? So if you take the ASVAB and you don't score a qualifying number for a specific job you want, you don't have to take any job that's thrown at you. You can say, I want to retake the ASVAB because this is the only MOS I want. Play hardball. Learn how to leverage your contract. If you have questions on that, let me know. I was an operations officer for recruiting battalion. I understand the Army's business model and how to leverage the process. And that wraps up the briefing. Thank you very much for your time.